Hello there. I'm Teresa Matsura, and you're listening to Uncanny Japan. What do you know about sakura, or cherry blossoms? Let me guess. Something like every year in Japan when spring rears its balmy, bird-chirping, flower-budding head. The trees fill with delicate powder-pink blooms. People come out in droves to stroll, picnic, or party underneath the pretty petal showers. Every one of them is celebrating this symbol of renewal and hope, while simultaneously pondering the fragility and impermanence of life and how they too will fall and be retaken by the earth. Or something like that. You're not wrong, but there's more. The stuff people aren't talking about. So go grab a blanket, make yourself an obento filled with onigiri, salted edamame, crispy chicken karaage, maybe some sliced tamagoyaki rolled egg, and some juicy strawberries. I'll bring the drinks and the meiji chocolate, and let's meet under the blooming cherry trees to learn everything you've ever wanted to know about cherry trees. Hint. There's a darker side to two. Would you like to explore the stranger, more obscure corners of Japanese culture? Dig a little deeper into superstitions, curious customs, and all those mysterious creatures that inhabit the land? If so, then this is the podcast for you. Uncanny Japan is where I, author Teresa Matsura, share all the fascinating tidbits I unearth while doing research for my writing. From the bizarre to the ghastly, and everything in between. I hope you enjoy the show. Hey, hey, happy spring. I'm pretty sure you already know, but just to be sure... Sakura means cherry blossoms, and hanami is flower viewing. But these days, almost exclusively, it means cherry blossom viewing. Hanami can be a leisurely meandering under a long row of flowering trees on a riverbank, or a picnic with your best buddy under a single tree in a park, or even a nighttime party with your rowdy friends. A generator hooked up to lights in a portable karaoke machine. The coolers full of beer. And I've seen all three every year in April. Some basics. While in Japan there are anywhere between 200 and 300 different kinds of cherry trees, the majority, somewhere between 70 to 80 percent, are called Somei Yoshino. Just so you know. The oldest cherry tree here is in Yamanashi Prefecture, Hokuto City. It's called Jindai Zakura, and estimated to be around 2,000 years old. In 2009, 118 seeds from the tree were taken into space by NASA, where they spent eight months circling the Earth in the space station. Out of all those seeds, only two sprouted. One of those was named Uchu Zakura, space sakura, and now resides at Jisoji Temple. It's special in that cherry blossoms usually have five petals per flower, but the space sakura has six, which very curiously aligns with the six posthumous worlds in Buddhism, the Rokudo. Remember them? Hell, hungry ghosts, beasts, asuras, humans, and gods. Coincidence? I think not. Except for the occasional enduring sakura, like Jindai Sakura, they aren't super long-lived. They're delicate and have shallow roots and susceptible to various pests, diseases, and environmental stress. An example, just last week I was woken up at 7 a.m. to the sound of chainsaws outside my window. To my horror, a bunch of men in helmets were out chopping off all the limbs of the trees in the park across the street. Afterward, I went weeping to my neighbor lady, and her guess was caterpillars. She said even spraying doesn't always help, and once they take hold, the trees are doomed. 
so you just have to prune them drastically to nip them in the bud, so to speak. Later I went over and examined the trees and saw all the cut branches were sealed with wax. That makes sense because doing research for this episode, I learned an old saying. Sakura kiru baka, ume kiranu baka. He who cuts a sakura tree is a fool. He who doesn't cut a plum tree is a fool. Meaning you're not supposed to prune or trim cherry trees because cutting actually exposes them to diseases and bugs. Hence the wax caps they put on the trees across the street. On the other hand, you do want to trim your plum trees. They do better after being cut. So the first Hanami is believed to have started with Emperor Saga, who reigned from 809 to 823. Then he introduced something called Hana no En, which was basically the same thing. Parties under the flowering trees, minus generators and karaoke machines, of course. Whether they were cherry or plum, though, I've read both sides. It sounds, though, like the tradition came from China during the Heian period, 794 to 1185, and it was enjoyed while celebrating ume, or plum blossoms. But during this time, Japan began to distance itself from China and started developing its own unique culture. One thing they did was nix the plum blossom viewing and switch to cherry trees. Aside from the fact that Japan was finding its cultural identity, there are some other reasons to revere the sakura over the ume. Not that plum blossoms aren't loved and picnicked under here. They are. But by far, people get more excited about the sakura. So I did some asking and some reading, and here are a couple reasons. One is simply sakura bloom after plum trees, which means it's a little warmer. Spring is more in the air, so to speak. I very vividly recall going out to Hanami with friends and family as a student here and freezing. Once with my kendo club, saying out loud, it's just too cold to enjoy this and are you all insane? Or something like that. Then you have nighttime cherry blossom viewing called Yozakura, which is really cool with the trees all underlit by big lights or hung with paper chochin lanterns. But it's also a lot colder. Now imagine a whole month earlier to see the plum blossoms. February is like the coldest month here. So it's easier and more enjoyable to partake in April. However, I'll add that climate change is, well, changing things. And the past, I don't know, 10 years, it's been gorgeous weather during the cherry blossom blooming period. Not cold at all. Another reason for cherry over plum is that the trees are perfectly bare through the winter. No leaves or anything. Spring comes and you see the first buds start to appear. There's a couple days of rain. And then the flowers bloom almost all at once. And not just one tree coming into full bloom either, but rows of trees, entire parks. It can be quite breathtaking. And that happens before they grow leaves because leaves are yucky, as I've been educated many times before. And this isn't me talking, but I was often told that it's not even worth going out and sitting under a tree if the leaves have come out. There's a word for it, too. Hazakura, leaf sakura. Now, I don't think it's true, but the green leaves do change the view. Now, instead of great clouds of pastel pink flowers against the vivid blue sky, you have the leaves there adding green, which I like, but still it's different. A final reason to adore sakura over ume is the sheer numbers of blossoms compared to the plum trees. Plum trees make one blossom per bud. A cherry blossom's bud, though, will produce anywhere from three to five flowers on tiny little stems. Some professor wrote that, and I never even noticed before. So sakura trees have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of petals per tree to shower over you when the wind blows. And that's a lot. Now we've all heard the life is fleeting shtick. But this Tanaka Osamu person who wrote the above says that even more than that, 
Since the trees are ornamental and don't produce fruit, even more so, we must appreciate them for what they are. In that short moment, with no expectation of any additional return, like an actual cherry or a plum. There's something else I've always gotten a kick out of, and that's how the weather news every spring season is all excited about the Sakura Zensen cherry blossom front, giving daily updates on how the blooming is going as it moves up Japan. There is even special vocabulary you learn real quick when watching these daily updates. Kaika just means blooming. Sambusaki means three quarters are blooming. The rest are still buds. Gobusaki, half are in bloom. Then you hear Hachibusaki, 80% or more are blooming, and that pretty much equals Mankai, which is full bloom. So you need to hurry up and get out there, because tomorrow you're going to hear Chiri Hajime, and that means they're starting to scatter those pretty petals. And after that comes Hazakura. Yuck, leaves. They're no longer lovely. Here's a funny thing I read. In Japan, you'll notice that sakura are very often found along riverbanks. And do you want to know why? Well, it's a theory. But some believe that Yoshimune had cherry trees planted all up and down the Sumida River, which flooded quite often back then. What he predicted would happen was that crowds of people would flock to see the blossoms, everyone walking along the riverside, thus pounding down the earth there, making it less likely to be washed away in the next hard rainfall. The idea spread all over the country, and everyone started doing it. Huge, if true. Because sakura are so beloved and hanami is so much fun, if you're like me, you'll wonder why, when you visit Japan, there aren't any cherry trees in people's yards. This baffled me for years. Parks, riverbanks, university campuses, yes. But I never saw any near a private residence. So I asked my mother-in-law, and she said no, no one would ever have a sakura in their yard. She wasn't real specific, but she said they were difficult to keep because they were sweet and loved by caterpillars, which corroborates my neighbor's story. But she also said that they were unlucky, and that always stuck with me. Now for the darker side of Sakura, the side you didn't know you didn't know, because you didn't know, and, well, maybe you knew, but I didn't know that you didn't know. That's funny, that's dumb. <laughs> As it turns out, it is true that they're thought to be inauspicious, and I found out more from my old Japanese superstitions and folk beliefs book. After the boom in the Heian era, when every spring the aristocracy and then later the common folk enjoyed the ethereal beauty while pondering the transience of human existence, they took a dark turn, which explains why you hardly ever find them in a yard. I read that exactly because they are associated with fragility, sadness, and even fear, that they are not considered especially lucky trees to have in your yard. Describing the way the petals fall, we say chidu, which means to scatter, or be dispersed, or to run. Also not especially fortuitous words. There were also times when the trees were planted as a way to comfort the spirits of the dead, a way to remember and console the souls of the departed. So now there's an added ghostly vibe, and some people do find them off-putting, even today. There's a goddess named Konohana Sakuyahime, who legend has it gave birth to the cherry blossom. Yet she didn't live very long for a goddess, and that carried over to the cherry tree, not having a particularly long life either, just like mom. There are dozens of variations from different prefectures saying something like the above, or things like, don't plant a cherry tree in your garden because your household won't prosper. You'll be ruined and your luck will scatter. I get the imagery of that last one. Some superstitions went that you shouldn't plant a weeping cherry tree because they should only grow on temple grounds. And I guess all of this has to do with their delicateness and the fact that they grow quickly, but also decay quickly. Then there was the association with samurai. And here's a saying about that. Hana wa sakuragi, hito wa bushi. 
The cherry blossom is the most beautiful flower, and like the cherry tree which blooms and falls quickly, a samurai who is graceful and beautiful at the time of death is the best. I also read that on Iki Island, it's taboo to burn cherry tree wood. In some areas in Japan, if you use sakura wood to steam mochi, you would become poor. And if you use the wood to cook soup, your entire family would perish. Which is harsh. But there is a good reason. Hear me out. It was a very valued wood, very expensive. So any family that was careless and dare I say dumb enough to use it to stoke their kitchen fire surely would lose all their fortune. Now this one though might have changed over the years because while no, I don't see cherry trees in anyone's yards or gardens, they do sell cherry wood chips at the local hardware store for smoking foods and campfires and no one's going on about disappearing fortunes there. Would you like to hear some ancient folk medicine? Don't do this by any means, but some believed ingesting the bark of the tree helped relieve nausea, diarrhea, stomach disorders, rashes, pain, and it was a remedy for fish poison. And by fish poison, it was hard to know for sure what was meant here. Whether it's food poisoning from eating old fish, likely, or getting sick from licking the ovaries of a fugu blowfish, I don't know, probably less likely, but a wonderful image. Hey, Saburo just licked a blowfish. Quick, go gnaw on a cherry tree. There was also the belief that the branches and leaves had the power to ensure a safe childbirth, and amulets called Sakura Yoji were given to expectant mothers. On the other hand, if you were pregnant and using a sickle to hack away at something, you should never hang it on a cherry tree, or you will have a difficult labor. It comes as no surprise that cherry trees were used for farming, too. And back when there were more varieties, different areas all over Japan would have the seed-sowing sakura, you started planting when it bloomed, and the threshing sakura, time to thresh those seeds, and the rice-planting sakura, you know what happens when that one blooms. Now let me end with a couple cool sakura stories from Kyoto. The first one... Every year, when the Somei Yoshino blossoms start to fall, another variety of cherry blossom called the Fugenzo Sakura blooms on the grounds of the Simbon Shakodo Temple in Kyoto's Kita Ward. Fugen is a Buddhist bodhisattva, and Zo means elephant. The reason these trees are called Fugenzo is because the leaves resemble the ears of the elephant Fugen Road. But there's something else. Instead of shedding petals like most of the others, these trees drop the entire flower. And what does that remind you of? Why, yes, a prisoner getting his head chopped off. The tree became associated with the executions that took place near the temple. So much so that rumor has it that some prisoners went to their death by decapitation, holding a branch of the Fugenzo cherry tree clutched in their hands. Beautiful. The second legendary tree is the mysterious blossom called the Shigure Sakura, or Rain Shower Sakura, or Drizzling Sakura. This can be found at Tsukinoa Temple, at the foothills of Atogo Mountain in Ukyo Ward, Kyoto. This temple is incredible in and of itself. Founded in 781, it's associated with the Shugendo sect of Buddhism, and such greats as Kuya, Honen and Shinran. Speaking of Shinran, it's believed he was the one who planted this particular Shigure Sakura, which blooms from late April to May. And it's special in that the leaves shed tears. I read about a man who visited there on a sunny day, but said the leaves held these perfect droplets that looked like little tears. They're said to represent Shinran's tears at having been exiled or they could be the tears of his followers who would miss him when he was gone. Or they could be his tears again when he had to part ways with the great Honen. I don't know who, but someone cried, and the tree picked up on it and continues the tradition every spring, it seems. And finally, in Nishikyoku in Kyoto, there's a tree called the Sengan Zakura at the Ohara no Shrine. It's a weeping cherry tree, 
and the blossoms' shape resemble lanterns. But from a distance, it looks as though they have many, many eyes. And so it has been dubbed the thousand-eyed cherry tree. It has an especially short blooming period of only two or three days. So it's said that if you are able to catch it in full bloom, you will be granted 1,000 wishes. Not one, not two. A thousand. And on that note, I wish you all a lovely day filled with a thousand wishes and zero decapitations. And I will talk to you again next week. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. You've reached the end of the show, and I just want you to know how much we appreciate you listening and supporting us. Any subscribing, reviewing, and gushing to your friends, family, even random strangers, really does help keep us going. If you have the means and you want to help a little more and get a little more, we are making extra content over on Patreon, all for only $5 a month. Or, if you like to read horror, you might be interested in my Bram Stoker-nominated short story collection, The Carp-Faced Boy and Other Tales. Hontoni arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you again, and I'll talk to you real soon. <laughs>